ACL tears are one of the more serious injuries that can occur in the knee. They take a long time to recover from, regardless of whether they're operated on or not, and unfortunately, a long-term loss of function is quite common. Hi, I'm Mark Reed from Physio Matters, and I'm going to be talking to you today about ACL assessment. Now, the most common mechanism of injury will be a sudden failure of the knee as it drops into an uncontrolled valgus. If the forces involved in the movement exceed the tolerance of the ACL, it can rupture. People will usually therefore describe a sudden jolt and severe pain in the knee and they will often hear it happen. The ACL is quite a robust ligament and when it tears it can be quite dramatic. Most people are going to feel it. Most ACL injuries are non-contact injuries and it's the knee dropping into valgus like this that usually causes the injury. It is very common to experience a large amount of swelling as the disrupted blood supply to the ligament bleeds into the joint causing what we call a hemarthrosis. For this reason, an extremely swollen knee following a valgus collapse should raise your suspicion of a potential ACL injury. The ACL has two main functions. It provides passive stability to the knee, acting as a seatbelt-like restraint against excessive movement in multiple directions, and it also has a significant role to play in proprioception, where it can act almost like a strain gauge to tell your brain exactly what position your knee is in and what forces are going through it. Disruption of the ACL will therefore often come with some lingering symptoms, even once the initial pain and dramatic swelling of the injury has calmed down. It's lost some of its mechanical stability, meaning the knee can often be truly unstable. And when put in certain positions, this instability may result in the knee giving way, a key subjective symptom you need to be looking out for in someone with a suspected ACL injury. The loss of the proprioceptive feedback will often be described as a lack of trust in the knee generally, a feeling that it's just not very strong or stable or a reluctance to move it into certain positions. This can be a bit of a more subtle and vague symptom, but someone who is describing this lack of trust in a knee, again, we should be suspicious of a potential ligament injury. Finally, to complicate the picture a little bit further, it is rare to injure an ACL in isolation. The forces involved with the mechanism of injury often result in concurrent meniscal tears, bone bruising, and MCL tears as well. So when we're assessing a, a, a knee that has been in an acute trauma, especially with a valgus collapse like this, it is key to be able to assess the ACL ligament in isolation so that we can work out how concerned we need to be over that ligament. One of the key things we're looking for with ACL injury, and especially if it's acute, is that large knee joint effusion. This is usually very obvious because the knee looks like a balloon. However, if it's subacute, it's been a, a few weeks since the injury happened, the swelling may well be subsiding and the joint effusion may be more subtle. If we're trying to detect a more subtle joint effusion, what we want to use is a test called the sweep test. With the sweep test, what we're looking to do is move around the swelling around the knee. So we start on the inside of the knee and we sweep up, looking to move any swelling up over the suprapatellar pouch. What we're then going to do is sweep back down the other side. And what we should see is this swelling moving around and then a ripple back to the inside of the knee where it started off. That would be a positive sweep test for a subtle effusion. When we want to assess the integrity of the ACL, there's a couple of simple tests that we can do to assess whether the ACL is intact. Now, the first of these tests will be the anterior draw. For this, we take the knee up to 90 degrees, we fix a point at the foot, and what we're looking to do is translate the tibia forwards. Any excessive translation of that tibia without an end feel would be a positive test for an ACL rupture. However, with this test, what you often get is a lot of co-contraction of the hamstrings occurring, which are going to pull the tibia backwards and almost mimic the job of the ACL. This can therefore lead to a lot of false negatives. To correct for that, we've got a test that's a little bit more sensitive than the anterior draw test, and that's the Lachman's. So with a Lachman's, what we want to do is get the knee into a slightly flexed position in this position, the hamstring should be more relaxed and less likely to hold on. From there, what we want to do is fix a point behind the tibia and draw the tibia forwards anteriorly in this direction. And it's that force there. 
What I like to do is add my fingers onto the medial joint line and lateral joint line so that I can feel for any movement that's occurring. Again, a positive test, what we're going to get is a lack of restraint. So the knee is going to move more than usual and it's going to feel springy at the end because that seatbelt-like restraint isn't intact. <laughs>